Um, and now, this is an integral that we know how to take. That's the whole point of doing all these substitutions, to give us an integral we know how to take. So let's take our time and make sure that we're getting that right. So we can rewrite this integral like this. And I think one of you guessed that this would be the antiderivative. Is this the antiderivative? Now how can you check that? Well, take the derivative. Is the derivative of this, this? If I took this derivative, would I get this function? Oh, actually, negative positive. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like our first try to take the antiderivative, there was a mistake there with the signs, which is easy to get confused about. Um, the derivative of this would be positive using the negative 2, which is not what we're trying to get back here. This is the right antiderivative, because the derivative of this really is the derivative of this really would give us this over here. Oh. to make a lot of mistakes when they're doing antiderivatives. So I really think, find it helpful to have this little table here of the difference between derivatives and antiderivatives. Um, so obviously antiderivatives just inverse, do the opposite of what we do for derivatives. Instead of reducing the exponent, we increase it. And instead of multiplying the coefficient, we divide the coefficient. This is where people tend to get confused. We know that we take a derivative by multiplying the coefficient by the old exponent. Well, here we'll divide the coefficient by the new exponent. So what would that give us here? Well, I have to increase this exponent by 1. Well, if you increase negative 2 by 1, you get negative 1. And I should divide the coefficient by the new exponent. So I'm going to divide by that new exponent. And that would be a mechanical way of getting the right answer, which is, has a positive sign and not a negative sign. This is the part that tends to give people the most trouble, although sometimes people forget what to do with the exponent, too. Um, in anti-differentiation, you increase the exponent, since in differentiation, you reduce the exponent. So this is probably a, a derivative that's very easy for you. Multiply the, co the exponent times the coefficient and reduce the exponent by 1, but we can see how we can take the antiderivative here. I increase the exponent by 1, and I divide the coefficient by the new exponent. And this is the part that people tend to forget, dividing by the new exponent. All right, so anyway, anyway, we ended up here with u to the negative 1 as our antiderivative. So uh, what's our answer? What did Marco say? Yeah, we still have to plug in what u is, because u is just a variable we invented. We can't just leave the u in our answer. This would also be secant theta. 
That's the answer we got before, right? Using the other method, we've already seen that the antiderivative here was the secant. So those are two ways to get to that answer. You add c to that too. Pardon me? You add c. Oh, yeah, my mistake. You're right. Indefinite integrals, we need the constant of uh, integration. That's right. Well, the substitution method here is really crucial. You're sure to see some problems with the substitution method. So you decide what substitution you're going to make. And then don't just write down u. You have to write down du. And we saw a good method for that is to take the derivative of u with respect to theta. And then we can move the differentials to opposite sides by treating them like they're separate variables. Now, how did we know that this was a good substitution to make? How do you know what substitution to make? You should try to make a sub you should try to find a formula for u whose derivative is also in the expression. You're trying to get an expression for u whose derivative is also in the expression. The reason why this simplified so much is that the derivative of u was also in the expression. And then we were able to substitute out both of those. So that's the substitution you're looking for. An expression for u whose derivative is also in the expression. Uh, and then you'll be able to get rid of both of them. And the, it's not always true my GSI helped us think of it as um, taking the most complicated part of it and um, making you the simple, the simplest chunk of the most complicated. So yeah. in this case, 1 over cosine squared is the most complicated, but the simple part of it is cosine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you said there was right. That is a good method, and it doesn't always work. Yeah. So that's right, but that is a good first instinct as well. The method that pretty much always works is getting an expression for u whose derivative is in the function as well. So the key thing that should jump out at you here is that the derivative of cosine is sine. So that's, that's the clue that we should try to get the u that involves cosine since this derivative is the sine. Okay. So this would be a really good question to mark and try again uh, on your own because you'll, you'll see a question like that on the test. So let's see, that was number nine. Okay. And uh, I would put this in your cheat sheet as well, the mechanical method for finding derivatives and antiderivatives of, um, of expressions like this. But the best thing when you take an antiderivative is always to check it by doing the forward derivative. I'm going to be especially careful with the signs. <laughs> 